I'm a little like the tin man, Arya. A little like the tin man, Elijah. I haven't used some of these joints for a while. It felt wonderful to baptize you today. The two of you are spectacular. And when I carry children around, I tell them this. You are beautiful. You are good. You are loved by your mother and father and all of us. And your life will be good and long. I hope that you hear me say that to you now. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Unflappable. It means having calmness or showing calmness in crisis. An unflappable person is cool, calm, and collected. An unflappable person is persistently calm, whether when facing difficulties or experiencing successes, not easily upset or excited. And I love this definition that has not changed in the dictionary since 1954, which says something about the nature of unflappable as well. It goes like this. Remaining composed and level-headed at all times, unswayed by adversity or excitement, impossible to fluster, not becoming frustrated or irritated easily. Now, moms and dads who wake up in the middle of the night hearing the screams or the nightmares or the night cries of their babies and children and then calmly rock them back to sleep, They're unflappable. An emergency room doctor or nurse who receives their 10th shooting victim in a row and remains calm, that's unflappable. For a matter, as a matter of fact, there's a doctor who's shown us what unflappable looks like for quite a while now. His name is Dr. Tony Fauci. Have you noticed? He's unflappable. Coach Tom Allen is my favorite example of unflappable today. The head coach of Indiana University, football team who in the pouring rain last night at home watched his team go behind 44 to seven to our Buckeyes and the stadium emptied out of his fans in his home stadium. And yet there he was as he left in the dumping rain at halftime, cheering his guys on and clapping for them and sending them into the locker room with great enthusiasm. That's unflappable. There's a guy named Sully. You know him. Chesley Sully Sullenberger, who captained and landed U.S. Airways Airbus A320 flight. 1549 on the Hudson River on January 15th, 2009. I think you'll all agree he should be in the dictionary where it says unflappable. And I pray this day that the 17 Amish and Mennonite Christian missionaries, 16 of whom are from here in Ohio, being held in Haiti, remain unflappable remain faithful in the face of hostility and possible death. I heard it said the other day on a press conference from somebody in the Christian Aid Ministries that they will be present to their captors every minute of the time they're there and they will pray for their release. Wow, that's unflappable. Unflappable people show us all how to remain calm in dire circumstances and very tough times. Ted Lasso is unflappable. In the seven-time Emmy award-winning Apple Plus TV series, American actor and writer Jason Sudeikis plays Ted Lasso. Ted is an American college football coach who has come to England having led Wichita State Shockers to the Division II NCAA football championship. He's hired to coach football in AFC Richmond, an English football team, no less. 
And as you all know, or may learn in the next second, football and soccer are not the same, although they're both played on a field. Now, Ted is very folksy. He's a Midwestern American who appears unsophisticated in the show, but this guy is sharper than a tack. He doesn't miss anything. He loves to coach and he cares about people more than wins. Ted is hired to coach this soccer team almost as a cruel joke by Rebecca Welton, the new owner of AFC Richmond, who received the team in an ugly divorce settlement. It's the only thing she got from her ex. She initially hired Ted with the purpose of intentionally running the team into the ground, as it was the only thing that she believed her ex-husband actually loved. But slowly, Ted converts her. <laughs> It's his personality. Did I mention at any point that Richmond is like the worst team in the league already? Now, none of this matters to Ted Lasso. When he is mocked and when he's put down in the opening press conference, he says to the person who mocks him, if that's a joke, I love it. If not, I can't wait to unpack that with you a little later. <laughs> at the same press conference, Ted also says, Taking on a challenge is a lot like riding a horse, isn't it? If you're comfortable while you're doing it, you're probably doing it wrong. Well, I'm not exactly sure what that means, but it sounds great. <laughs> Although Ted literally knows nothing about soccer, I mean zero. He simply cares about his players, the owner, the personnel of the club, his coaches, all of their loved ones, and best of all, all of the Richmond fans, no matter how badly they treat him. He's kind, he's loving to everyone. As he says, if you care about someone and you've got a little love in your heart, there ain't nothing you can't go through together. Ted works hard every day to keep the team together. He never gives up and in his words, there are two buttons that I never like to hit. One's panic and the other snooze. That's Ted Lasso. And Ted is unflappable. But more importantly, Ted is this amazing person who's given to us by the script writers of this show. Rabbi Jeffrey Salkin wrote for the Religious News Service recently to rabbis and pastors these words. Ted is clearly out of his depth in his new situation. His personal style, Midwestern folksy and aw shucks, clashes with his new environment. This earns Ted the unseemly British nickname of Wonker. Look it up. In one episode, Ted appears at a local school and the kids start shouting out at him, Wonker. Unfazed, Ted goes on to introduce the team captain, Roy Kent, and the kids enthusiastically welcome Roy. The contrast is palpable. If this upsets Ted, he does not show it, Rabbi Sulkin writes. In that sense, he demonstrates what Jewish mysticism calls tazim tazum, which is the ability to contract into oneself and let others have the power and the glory. Tazim tazum. Or in the words of the Talmud, Sulkin goes on, our rabbis have taught those who are persecuted and do not persecute in turn those who listen to contemptuous insults and do not reply, those who act out of love and are glad for the suffering. Concerning them, scripture says, they that love God are like the sun going forth in his strength. Now in general, rabbis and pastors, coaches and leaders get criticism, sometimes a lot and sometimes they say more than they actually get. Sometimes. That criticism actually morphs into something that looks more like abuse. And other well-meaning people who simply do not know how to articulate their needs turn this around in different ways. In the midst of criticism, it always takes moral courage and inner clarity to swallow it. To say, this only seems to be about me, but something deeper is going on. Or back to Ted's original words, maybe we could unpack this a little later. The challenge is always not to hit back, and Ted Lasso models that for everyone. You might say Ted Lasso and all the others I've mentioned have learned this quality of character from the best. 
They've learned it from their families, their friends. They've also learned it in scripture, where I have found the most unflappable people of all. In our Hebrew scripture reading today, Job comes to the end of his trials, and yes, I want a round of applause. We have made it through the readings of Job that have lasted for five weeks. Let's hear it for Job. <laughs> Lay that book aside for a while. <laughs> he has suffered greatly and somehow through it all he's endured through his faith in God. And as he endures, God delivers him and grants him greater fortunes than he ever had before. Unflappable Job ends up unbeatable in God's eyes. For more than a month of Sundays, we have also been receiving readings from the letters to the Hebrews, the letter to the Hebrews. And in this letter, which you really need to read from beginning to end all by itself, because it's an amazing letter. Throughout this letter, Jesus Christ has been lifted up as our high priest, as the Messiah. In Hebrews 7, he is called, quote, holy, blameless, undefiled separated from sinners and exalted above the heavens. Although he's not called unflappable, he might as well be, because to be holy, blameless, and undefiled, and set apart from everybody on heaven and earth, that kind of makes you unflappable. This is the definition of what it is. In Mark, it is the unflappable Jesus who encounters the unflappable Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus is blind. And he's begging by the roadside just to survive, right? He is dying there as he sit, sits with his bowl by the roadside and begs for food. And then all of a sudden, the man he knows is his greatest hope comes to town, comes to Jericho. And both men begin to be aware of each other in this story. Bartimaeus admires Jesus because he knows that in this presence with this man, there is the only one who has the potential to save him and restore his sight. And Jesus ends up, as he gets to know Bartimaeus, admiring him as well, simply because he has faith and trust. Jesus restores his sight, which is not supposed to be possible. It's possible because it's Jesus, but it doesn't happen in real life. He acknowledges clearly that it's not Jesus that does the healing. Jesus says this to Bartimaeus, it's not me, it's you. You're the one that has it within you to heal because of the power of what you believe and the faith that you have. And so there they are, Bartimaeus and Jesus. They set apart from all the others in scripture as two who connect in a way that brings heart and mind together in a beautiful way, unseen anywhere else, really. Circling back and ending, I want to talk about Ted Lasso. <laughs> so he has this mantra. It is one word, believe. He uses it as his driving force in the goodness that he sees in other people. He believes in people. But the amazing quality which drives this unflappable approach to the goodness that he brings to coaching and to life is one word. It's kindness. This guy is really kind. In fact, last night, Jason Sudeikis hosted Saturday Night Live, the, the star of this. He said, I don't know how this show has become such a success because it does the two things that Americans aren't liking these days, soccer and kindness. So, I mean, you know, he's funny too. In our times and in this nation, kindness has too often lost out to unkindness. All the unflappable ones in our lives, our heroes of unflappability, seem to hit the ground and just cr be crushed down. But with them, we have hope. And in them, we can learn how to get on the kindness car on the train to glory. In this day, which is filled with baptismal water, and about to be filled with some rainwater from what we're hearing. We would be wise to remember all those who model for us a way of unflappable living. May we learn from them and become more like them. And as we go from here today, I offer you this one last Ted Lasso thought for our team, 
Think of this as our locker room for those at home too. Just think of it that way. And he's talking to his team. He says this, I promise you, there is something worse, something worse out there than being sad. That's being sad and alone. And my friends, ain't no one in this room alone. No one. Thanks be to God for the unflappable ones of our lives who show us and teach us every day that we're not alone. Amen.